What is going on everyone? I'm Adriano and this video is a technical tutorial on how to use the filter class in AWS Glue to filter out data based on values in columns of our data set. I'll be demoing this class which is applied to a dynamic data frame in AWS Glue to filter based on numbers in a column, strings in a column, and also how to filter based on values from multiple columns at the same time. All right, so I'm in my Jupyter Notebook here, which is using an interactive glue session. I've already went ahead to import my JSON data from S3 into my notebook here, and we've saved it into a dynamic frame called DYF underscore customer. And before we can go ahead and filter our data, one thing I wanted to do was make sure that my data that was coming from S3 was formatted correctly. So I've made sure to make my total amount column uh, from a string, which was being applied originally to uh, double so that we can actually filter the numbers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run that method. So we use the apply mapping method in order to do that. And if we just quickly take a look at our data before we filter it, Great, we can see that we have four columns of our data set. We got the order ID, we have a customer ID, we have the total amount and order date. So for our first filter, let's go ahead and filter based on the total amount column. All right, so we're gonna make a new variable called dyf underscore filter, which is gonna be the result of our filter data set. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit filter dot apply. So where's this filter class coming from? If we go up to our top here, it's coming from AWS glue dot transform. So because we're using import star, it's automatically being imported into our glue job here. And if we go back to that line of code, we need to pass two parameters for this function in order for it to work. So within our brackets here, our first variable is going to be frame, and this is going to be equal to the dynamic frame that we want to filter on. So I'm just going to pass the frame from above here, which is this remapped dynamic frame. Next is going to be the filtering function to filter our data. So the parameter is going to be called f, and what we're going to be passing in is what's called a lambda function. A Lambda function is a small one line Python anonymous function that can do in a variety of different things, but let's just walk through what we need to do to filter this out based on a number range. All right, to start us out here, we're gonna do Lambda X, and now we're gonna pass in X, and we're gonna pass in a list, and within this list, it's gonna be the column that we wanna filter. So I'm filtering based on the column called total amount. So within my string, I'm just gonna pass in total underscore amount, and we're now going to say, let's make that greater than 500. All right, so what is this doing? So if I run this, it should basically filter out our data, all the data in this dynamic frame where the values are greater than 500. So let's just give that a run. Great. All right, now in order to show our results, we're going to hit that variable plus show. And let's just print that to get the results. All right, great. So now if we look at the total amount column here, we notice that all the values being returned are greater than 500. So we have successfully filtered based on our criteria. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, so for our next example, let's filter a column based on values in a list. So I'm gonna create a new variable called DYF filter two, which is gonna be the output of our filtered results based on our strings that we're filtering on. Again, we're gonna use the filter class and use the apply method from it. And again, we're going to pass in frame. Now let's just filter based on our original dynamic frame, which is the customer underscore mapped variable. And again, we're going to pass in F, which stands for the filter function we're going to pass. Now we're going to write Lambda space X, and we're going to pass in now X again with our list. And it's going to be the column that we want to filter. So it's going to be order underscore date. So now we're going to pass in the values that we want to filter. So we can use an in operator and we're going to pass in another list. And within the list is going to be all the strings that we want to filter on. So I'm going to filter based on the dates. So I'm going to pass in the year, the month and the day. Now let's also filter on a second one. So we're going to pass in another date here. Great. And now we're just going to close that off. We want to make sure we close off our string and add a bracket to close off our function. Great, that was successful, but let's just show our results. So let's add the show method here and give that a run. And great, now what we're seeing is we're only getting dates that are coming through that are from the 27th of August and 28th. 
Awesome. Now for our last example here, we're going to be filtering on multiple columns. So, so again, we're going to be using the apply method and pass in our frame that we're going to be filtering on. And again, let's pass in F our beginning of our Lambda function. So now we're going to go ahead and filter based on our total amount column and the order date. And we're even going to pass a range. So this is going to get a little bit more complicated. So again, we're going to start with X plus total underscore amount. Now let's make that greater than 500, but also let's filter when the values are less than 100 as well. So now we're going to say, or the value is less than 100. Now what we're going to do is let's close this off here. So this is our first filter. So we want to filter on this range, but also we're going to add an and statement. And now we're going to pass in our list, the order date. And we're going to make that equal to the day of the 27th. All right, let's just close off our function, give that a run. So that was successful. So we know that it worked, but let's just print our results here. Show, and we're going to run this block of code again. All right. So now what we can see here, we have values greater than 500 that are being returned and also values that are less than 100 are being returned for the date of the 27th. All right. Last thing I want to show you is if you're ever wondering what are all the parameters included with the filter function. If we just go down to a new block of code and we write filter dot describe RGS and we close that off. If we give that a run, we're going to get a list that contains a dictionary of all the parameters. So see here, this is the frame. That's the one we used. And we also used the name F, which was the predicate function to call the dynamic frame. So this was our filter parameter that we passed in. And of course, another good one I want to say that's worth using as well is the transform underscore CTX. So if you want to name all the steps or filters within your glue job to keep track of the state, this parameter is important if you're using the bookmarking feature in AWS glue. In case you wanted to check out the code, I've included a link to this Jupyter notebook in the description below, which is linked to my GitHub repo. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful on how to use the filter class on dynamic frames in AWS Glue. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're interested in more videos on AWS Glue, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.